Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is part two of how to put together your bottom end. In the last video, we put our pistons to the rods, put all the rings on. So in this video, we're gonna be installing the crank. We have our crankshaft from the machine shop. We have it polished and uh, balanced with our rotating assembly. We got all the new hardware we're gonna be torquing in, all the new bearings. These are all the tools you're gonna to need. So we're gonna have cleaning setups, torquing. We're gonna be measuring bolt stretch. Got all the goodies here. So by the end of this video, you should be able to take all of this and be able to do this. All right, so we got everything laid out here that we're gonna be using to clean our block and crank. We got files to deburr anything we need to. We'll start there. We got brushes, an assortment from Harbor Freight to clean all the orifices. Um, you're gonna need rags. We got carb cleaner to get into the orifices and blow anything out. And we're gonna be using an HVAC AC line tool to actually put a lot of pressure and volume into holes to make sure everything's clean. So this is a good way to, to clean stuff if you don't wanna buy a whole bunch of these guys. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and start working by getting the crank cleaned up. So we're gonna start by deburring anything. So um, there was a little place here where we deburred. Um, I could feel a sharp edge right here. So we're just gonna take our file and clean that up before we do any uh, cleaning. So let's take the time, make sure everything is nice and clean. we all got it all deburred we're going to start cleaning all the oil passages so we could use our carb cleaner spray inside and then we have a brush just brush so you can see how there's dirt in there right so we're trying to get that as much of it as we can out so just keep doing that you know do that a couple of times work through the passages All right, so we're going through every hole, flushing it out one time. Then we're gonna come back with our brush and just run it through a couple times, brush them all out. And then we'll come back with the tool and just flush out the last amount. All right, so now that we're done cleaning all the passageways, uh, just dry off the mineral spirits or whatever you're using to clean um, and then oil it up so it doesn't build surface rust while you work on getting the block cleaned up. All right, so we got our block outside. We're gonna do a similar cleaning process as the crank. We got our uh, deck surfaces surfaced, so we noticed some burrs in these. Uh, these are coolant passages, but there's some oil passages, so we're gonna go through, make sure there's no uh, stranglers there that could possibly fall in. Clean all that up, um, all those uh, burrs. We also pulled off all the, uh, the oil galley uh, plugs so there's one here on the four six uh, or five six point eight block and one here we pull those out so we could clean through as thoroughly as possible so we're going to use that AC flush tool to spray off the block uh, passages as well all right so we're going to start by cleaning off all the surfaces inside here brush out all the holes for the bolts um, and get all the general dirt in here and the, the bores cleaned out. After we get that all cleaned out, we're gonna focus on cleaning out the orifices for the oil passages. The reason we wanna do it that way is so that dirt from the out surface doesn't get into the hole. So we'll do those last. Um, and then just remember flush, brush, flush, and then that'll get the whole thing clean. So let's go ahead and do it. So we're 
we're just spraying with this to clean off the main areas in the block. Get off all the dirt. Um, one thing I learned with this is keep it upside down, and if you need to add, you know, a kind of mist, if you need to add fluid, just kind of tilt it over and put fluid in. So uh, this thing's working really well. So um, we're going to go ahead and now focus on getting all the uh, galleys cleaned up, and this block will be ready. Since we're going to plastic gauge right now, um, we want to make sure everything's as clean as possible. We want to clean all the mating surfaces. We're going to clean all the bearing, where the bearings are going to sit. Um, then we'll put in the bearings dry, drop in the crank, put the plastic gauge pieces on top, then put the caps on, torque everything to spec, and take it all back out and let's me we'll measure the clearances at each one. So, All right, so we're going to start laying in our bearings in here. The oil hole sides obviously go with the side that has a hole. Um, your bearings might have a marking as well that says upper or lower. This is the upper half when it's in the engine, lower is the, the cap half. All right, to install these, you're just gonna start the tang into the tang there. Just put it in a little under flush. This side will be up. Then press in on this side until they come flush. And that's it. Again, line that up, under flush, push it in. Let it roll up into position. So you want to make sure everything is dry when you're installing these into the block. These do not, you don't put oil on the interface between the bearing and the block. All the, the oil or the, the lube is going to go on this face when we do the final assembly. Drop the crank in. So now that we got the crank in, we're gonna put in our ARP studs since we're using studs to install these. They have a hex on the top to drive them in. Um, it doesn't, you don't put torque on this, so just thread it in. All right, so we got all the studs in. You just go hand tight, no need for a tool. These are only to take out the, the studs, not to install them. So just go hand tight till it bottoms out. If you have a clean hole, you should bottom out pretty easily. All right, next step is putting in your bearings on your main caps. So we got our main caps and all our bearings. They're numbered. If there's different sizes for different main caps, make sure to install the right one in there. But it's the same procedure. This is number one. So I grab my number one bearing. Again, same procedure as with your uh, block bearings. Put that under flush, push this side down, and let it slide into place. All right, so we're gonna install our thrust bearings. For this engine, every engine's a little different. So this 6A, 5-4, similar Windsor block. The, uh, the side with the notches here will face the crank. One goes on one side of the main, one goes on the other side, the other way, so these slide in. So to install these, you can set them in, then rotate. That one's in, and this one notches towards the crank. Set it in. You might have to pull the crank towards you. And then slide this one in. Okay. Now before we put the cap on, we're gonna put the plastic gauge pieces on here. So make sure your oil holes aren't straight up. So you could put the lay the plastic gauge on the top. And then we'll set the caps on, torque everything down remove the caps and check the gauge. In the plastic gauge kit, you're gonna get your instructions. 
then you have two levels of uh, plasti gauge for different thicknesses. The green is one to three thou, the red is two to six thou. So based on how much clearance you think your motor has, you might want to start with that. All right, so you want to cut the plasti gauge to the length of the bearing cap. Um, it could measure taper, so that's why you want to do the full length because you could see if one side's thicker than the other. Um, so we're just going to cut this to length. This stuff is actually pretty brittle, so you want to maybe check if you have... Ours is all broken up, so we can't use this whole strip. So I hope we have enough to do this engine. Um, if not, we might be able to use the other one since it does fall within our range. Slice it open and we'll take it over to the block. All right, so we take our plastic gauge out of the wrapper. It's really small and brittle. And then we're just gonna drop it since our engine's upside down, we'll drop it on the uh, main journal. You want it to be perpendicular to the main and centered as best as you can. So now that we got all the plastic gauges laid down, we're going to install our caps. So this is a 6.8 liter V10, uh, five fours and the Windsor base blocks are similar. And I think most mod motors are similar in the terms that they have these uh, planes that will guide the cap and we have to actually press this kind of into position. So the way we're going to do this, it might not be the same for your engine, but uh, this applies for these engines for sure. And there's also these pins on the side that locate it uh, forward and backward on the engine. So what we're going to do is just start this up, get it close, make sure it's as square as possible. We're going to pull it down with our hardware. We are going to install this drive for now, so um, we're going to have to come back, take them off to put the grease because we need to put the lube when we're torquing these to make sure we hit the right spec. So. The process here is going to be pulling this down till we have probably like a 20 thou, 30 thousand gap here. Then we're going to install these pins to set the, the, the back and forth motion so it's straight. And then fully tighten these down and then install the side pins, the side, uh, sorry, side bolts. Um, the reason we're doing it this way is because of the plastic gauge in there. We don't want to pull this down all the way to the bottom then install the side pins because it'll smear on the bearing surface and, and cause a false reading on the plastic gauge. So we're gonna go ahead and tighten these down until we have the gap. So you wanna be as square as you can, tighten these evenly to pull it down. All right, we're gonna go ahead and stop there. So now we have a gap. It's not fully seated. We're not smashing the plastic gauge. So once we do that, we're gonna go ahead and move on to installing the pins. So these pins will set this fore aft. Um, they fit pretty tight. Yeah, so we didn't get it perfectly straight. So we're gonna tap these in with a rubber mallet. Get them started. Well, that one went in easy. And this one, another thing, there's a hole for the through bolt, so you wanna make sure those are lined up. Yeah, that one took a little more. So another way to tell if it's lined up, these flats need to be flush with your oil pan rail. So forward and backward like that. Now we're gonna go ahead and set this down farther. Just grab your ratchet, tighten it. And now we're actually gonna be smashing the plastic gauge, so. All right, so it's fully set down. And like I mentioned before, we're gonna have to take out the bolts, put our ARP loop so we could torque it to the right spec. All right, so we moved over here to the table so we can lay out the parts and see everything easier. So we're gonna go ahead and start lubing all the fasteners so when we torque them, they're all ready. So the way we're gonna do the mains here is we got the washers. We're gonna set the washers down first. We just need a lube between the washer and the nut surface and then all the threads. So what I like to do is use a little paintbrush with our ARP lube and we could go ahead and brush on all the, the lube on the uh, washer faces, the threads, do both of these. 
and we're using the lube now because we want to torque it to the correct uh, spec to make sure we have the preload set properly on all the bearings and all the, the mains so that way our uh, measurement is accurate. And we're also going to lube up the nuts a little bit. Right, we're not going to be tightening these. We're just going to hand tighten them because we're going to do all of them, torque them in our sequence. So we're going to be following our sequence and then in steps. So I think ARP recommends three steps, whatever your fastener recommends or your engine, um, torque them there. We also got our side bolts. So uh, they have a washer. Quick note on these. There's a chamfer on the washer on one side, not the other side. The chamfer side always goes towards the head to uh, make room for the radius there. So um, this will go this direction on this uh, fastener. We'll go ahead and lube this up, slide the washer on, and then lube up the threads. All right, so we're on the last one, which has the thrust washer. Again, this is the top piece. We put in the two bottom ones. The side with the notches goes towards the crank surface. So we just set this in here and then slide this on. All right, now we're gonna torque them to sequence once we got them all put in and lubed up. All right, so we finished torquing everything the spec, followed the uh, instructions and got where we needed to go with multiple steps. We noticed uh, some of these are sticking up farther than other ones, so I think we're gonna go back and loosen these up some more because most likely the hold is not threaded as deep on some of these, so you should always have at least one thread exposed so it's engaging the full nut. So these are too deep, so we just go back and loosen that up. These don't need to be tight, the stud doesn't need to be tight in the block. So that shouldn't be a problem. We'll just adjust them to be right. So remember, do not spin your crankshaft because I've had the urge to spin it a couple times. Don't spin it. We got the uh, plastic gauges all in here. They're smashed now. So once everything's torqued, we just take, loosen everything back up. We're gonna pull these caps off and see, measure what the plastic gauge is giving us on the clearances. All right, so we're moving the caps. We just clamp onto this. So it's kind of hard to remove them. You want to remove them as straight up as possible so you don't uh, you know, smash the plastic gauge anymore. But this is the best we got. So just jiggle this back and forth and pull up on it. Just go slow. You don't jiggle as much as you can. So that way you don't smash the gauge. There we go. And then that's what you're left with. So, oh, this side doesn't leave the plastic on there. It's on the crank. All right, so we got all the main bearings off. Now we're gonna measure. So you just take a piece of the uh, wrapper. These are the measurements on there. So you're gonna measure the thickness of the gauge compared to the, the either the green or the white area. And where it falls in is the, the measurement of your clearance. So um, we'll do the easy one here. So first thing to notice is that it's even all the way across. So that means it's, it's a pretty even uh, engagement. So you can see one and a half thou, it's wider. So it's not one and a half. Two is pretty much dead on. I might be just slightly larger than two. And then three is obviously too tight. Okay. So we got around two thou with this thing. Here it's looking like number one main bearing measured 2.8 to 2.9 thou clearance. So 0.8 to 0.9 thou tighter with the plastic gauge than um, it actually measured. Let's try this other one. We could see there's like a slight taper here because this side is squished down more so it's tighter there, looser here. Measuring it. Looks like it might be slightly tighter than 2,000. Probably like 1.9 or 1.8 on this side. Then the other side. Yeah, it's a little tighter. Or sorry, a little 
more loose than 2,000. So like maybe 2.2 or something. So 2.2 to 1.8, 1.8 to 2.2. They measured a little tighter than the front one, 2.5 to 2.7. So yeah, it trended the same, but it's still, this is showing a tighter clearance than what was actually measured. All right, so we're done with the plastic gauge process. So if you're trying to do that, that would be the steps you would use. Our measurements came off consistently tighter than what uh, they measured at the machine shop. So, you know, we didn't measure those, but uh, just keep that in mind if you're gonna use the plastic gauge method. Um, so now that we're done with that, we're gonna take the crank back out, clean up all the gate, the plastic gauge on the, um, the mains there, put the assembly lube and put this thing back together for real this time. We got all our bearings greased up on our caps and in our block. We also put a little bit of uh, uh, assembly lube on the, the journals there. So we're ready to drop in this crankshaft. You don't need to get any of the assembly lube in between the faces, so keep that clean. Um, but uh, yeah, let's drop this thing in. So we're really just repeating the process we did for the uh, when we were doing the plastic gauge measuring. So, but except this time, of course, we have lube in here. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and drop in our caps, put in all the fasteners, uh, follow the, the sequence and torque everything to spec. So we're gonna put all this together the same way. We're gonna install these dry, get tighten them down to set the caps down, then take them all out, lube everything, and torque it to spec. Then once that's complete, we can move on to getting the pistons inside the block. Now we're gonna go ahead and torque our main caps down. So on this particular engine, we're gonna start with number four and work out from there. Then we'll move on to the side bolts. Those will just be one step straight to 40 foot pounds and we'll be done. So we got everything torqued down. We're just being extra anal and paint marking. This will just give us a future reference to see if anything rotates. But um, if you're doing it, you don't have to paint mark. I wouldn't worry about that. So everything's torqued down. We got all of the side bolts torqued down. If you noticed, we uh, took out the studs. So there's at least one thread, two threads is ideal. So make sure, or you, know, you might wanna check to see if yours is doing that if it's too deep in the hole. You could do it like uh, you're adjusting valves, you know, have that in there and keep adjusting until it looks good. All that's done. So um, a little tip we, we figured out while installing these caps on this engine, we have these two things. We were tapping them with a the hammer before, which is not great. I don't like that. But what we notice if you set the cap in and if you have two people, really, this is pretty easy. Just have them hold in the, these pins. The looser side will, uh, will uh, the side that's deeper in, the other side the pin will go in and then as you you could tighten the side that the pin is loose then the other side comes loose and you could jiggle it in so you don't have to tap on it so that that's something we figured out we like how that worked so with everything torqued down we could check to make sure everything spins good this feels good um, then we got to check the end play so we put in those thrust bearings um, we're going to put a dial indicator on the front face and see how much play there is in the crankshaft motion uh, for aft thrust so Let's go ahead and do that now. All right, so we're getting about six thousandths of thrust. So we just use a screwdriver, thrust it one way, then set, set your zero. And then you're gonna go, you wanna be as close to the, the, the bearing journal or the main journal that has the thrust washer. So for us, it's this rear one and then um, apply the force pushing it the other way and then get the measurement. So now that we know our in play is within spec, we're done with the crank and we're ready to put our piston and rod assemblies in. 
All right, so we're prepping our pistons to put into the engine. We're just wiping around the uh, skirt, making sure there's no debris, no dust on here. Getting this ready to go in. And then we're gonna be installing our bearings into the big end here. So make sure this is all clean, no oil. And then these have an upper and a lower, so this says lower. That's for the cap side, the upper goes to the uh, rod side, so this will go in here. And you follow the same process as with the mains. Get your tank started, lower, and then roll it into position. And that's it. This is ready to go in. We're setting our ring gap orientation now. Uh, we're doing it right before we put in the engine. So what we're doing is following the Ford spec for the mod motor. And the way that is, is the top one is located at this corner, second one this corner. Our upper, upper oil ring is here. The lower oil, oil ring is down here. And then the expander middle ring is right in the center. So that's what we're following. So we're oiling up our cylinder wall. We got the piston all oiled up. We're gonna go ahead and drop it in. Before we drop it in, we wanna make sure our orientation's right, make sure the uh, radius is on the right side for your crank, just to double check. Then we oriented the engine vertical so the, the piston will stay down or the, the rod will stay down and won't clash anything. And then we wanna roll the crank so the, uh, the connecting rod journal is farthest down so we don't hit it. And you'll probably have to put your hand in there to guide the rod so you don't hit anything. So this just gives you some extra room. Then we didn't oil the bearing yet. We'll do that once we flip it over to torque everything. So we're using this clamp or a band style uh, compressor. So you just want to set it down on the block I like to hold up the piston a little bit so that way I know I'm grabbing the, the bottom ring. And then you want to make this thing tight. This push down. So then keep the tool pressed down, take your mallet and give it a couple good whacks so it the rings will get in the hole. That's it. There we go. So now we're going to flip the buck over to put the rod cap on. Um, so let's do that. So now we'll grease it up, put the assembly lube in there. Make sure you get a little assembly lube on the, the faces that ride on the, uh, the rod. Okay. All right, so we got the cap, we put the bearing in, just put a little bit of the assembly lube here. Orient the cap the right way. So make sure your pins are aligned and it's seated down by hand. You don't want to tap this in because it might disrupt the bearing. So we'll use the bolts to pull it together. So I'm just installing the bolts dry now so we could pull the parts together. Then I'll take them out and grease them for the lube for the torque. So I don't want to smear that around until I'm ready to torque. And you want to do this evenly, just like all the other parts. So I'm going to go ahead and torque, I mean, apply some torque so it seats everything down. Then I'm going to pull them back out and grease them up to final torque them. We'll actually show you uh, how to 
use a bolt stretch gauge so you can make sure your torque is appropriate. So we'll take a look at that now. All right, so we're gonna put some on the threads, take our little brush, get all around on the threads. And then under the head of the bolt. Then I like to put a little extra on the face where it's gonna torque down. So this is the stretch gauge we'll be using. You wanna just set these down hand tight. They don't, you don't wanna tighten them or put induce any stretch into there when we zero out the tool. So we're just gonna zero it out by setting it on. These have a, there's a groove on the top or a centering location and then a centering uh, drill spot on the bottom. And that's where you index this on. So move it around a couple times, you can see, and then set the zero here. All right. So that's good. So then we take this off. And then we go ahead and torque it to our spec. Okay, so you need to determine what torque you want to torque these to. Usually your, the rods come with a uh, information on the torque spec. So for us, we have 80 foot pounds. We torqued one to 80 foot pounds already, you measured it, and 80 foot pounds was not enough to hit the bolt stretch requirement that they provide. So we had to increase our foot, our torque rating five foot pounds increments to, until we hit five to six thou of bolt stretch. So that took a couple tries. Once we got there, we know now our torque requirement is actually 90 foot pounds to get this bolt stretch. So we're gonna be torquing to 90 foot pounds on these. If you don't have a stretch gauge, you can use the recommended amount, but the best thing to do is to check the stretch of the bolt itself. So we're gonna go ahead and torque these to 90 foot pounds and see what the stretch is. All right, so we took it to 90 foot pounds. Now let's check the stretch, same manner, put it in. When the holes jiggle it around a couple times so it's nice and centered. And here we are at right at six thou. So we're good there. We're gonna go ahead and move on to the next one. All right, so our second one, 5.5, 5.6, so we're good. So we're gonna check every one. You have to zero the tool for every fastener you do. So zero it, torque it, check it. All right, so we're gonna continue working through the rest of these, and then we're gonna show you the last step, which you absolutely must do. Now to the most important step. So we're just checking to make sure there's no changes in resistance as you spin it around. It's nice and smooth. And just to hear the sweet sound of those rings rubbing on those freshly honed cylinder walls. So that's it, the bottom end is fully assembled. It's ready for boost, NOS, whatever you're building your build for. If this video helped you out, don't forget to like and subscribe.